Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on our news, just how many COVID deaths were unvaccinated, a health expert solution for quarantined voters, tensions run high over voter ballots in Pinewood, and the latest polls show a tight election race. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, unvaccinated individuals are continuing to bear the brunt of the COVID-19 virus with 95% of deaths in the last five weeks being people who haven't taken a single dose. Jared Higgs has more details in this report. Health data continues to show that the vast majority of COVID hospitalizations and deaths are individuals who aren't vaccinated. 95% of those admissions for COVID were not vaccinated. Approximately 4% of people had one dose of the vaccine. Director of the National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease Program, Dr. Nakia Forbes, says between August 1st and September 8th, 400 patients were admitted to PMH with severe COVID-19. 95% of those admissions were unvaccinated and 4% had one dose of the vaccine. The statistics for the people who died are similar. 95% of deaths were unvaccinated and 5% had one dose of the vaccine. There were three persons and that accounted for less than 1% of fully vaccinated people who had a breakthrough infection and they all lived. According to Ministry of Health data, only about 15% of the population is fully vaccinated with another 27% having at least one dose of the vaccine. The health situation has deteriorated massively since the end of July. Between March 15th and July 31st, health officials reported 400 hospitalizations, 98% of which were unvaccinated. That four and a half month period equals the stats tallied over the last five weeks. Between the period of August 1st to September 8th, and that's a much shorter period than March 15th to July 31st. We also admitted 400 persons from COVID. So that should tell you how bad this wave is. Officials say the risk is greater now that COVID-19 variants are confirmed to be circulating in the country. Chief among them, the highly contagious Delta variant. Forbes says there are very rare instances, less than 1% of the time, when a person takes a vaccine, still contracts COVID and dies. She says those people usually have comorbidities like obesity. Officially, Forbes says no fully vaccinated person in the country has died. Now I have heard from relative or relative of someone who said allegedly they were fully vaccinated and the person died. Um, in that instance, the person did have medical issues and required oxygen and did not present to hospital. So I do make a plea for everyone to remember to get vaccinated. If you are fully vaccinated and you have a breakthrough infection, if you're having shortness of breath, kindly do present to the hospital because that will make a difference. You can make an appointment to take the COVID-19 vaccine at vax.gov.bs. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Director of the National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease Program, Dr. Nakia Forbes, says it would have been safer to allow COVID positive voters to vote electronically. On Thursday, Health Minister Renward Wells announced that quarantined voters would be allowed to vote, as was the practice in countries like the United States. Well, if that scenario happens with persons in, that are in the same space, there would be a potential for COVID transmission. So that could be safely done, for example, if it was online or, or some other remote forum. The government came under pressure to allow quarantined voters to cast their ballots after a lawyer for the PLP indicated that the party would take legal action if provisions weren't made for people in quarantine to vote. But the best practice recommendation is that persons who are COVID positive should be in isolation. Well, tensions ran high at one polling station last evening following complaints that ballot envelopes and boxes were not sealed. Bethany McDermott was there and filed this report. Drama erupted at Sadie Curtis Primary School Thursday afternoon, just hours after most of the advanced polling stations closed. 
Progressive Liberal Party candidate for Pinewood, Miles LaRota, said a PLP representative raised the alarm that neither the ballot envelopes or boxes were properly sealed as they were getting ready to leave the voting center. The ballots that were used, that were voted on by the constituents of Pinewood, were not placed in an envelope and sealed and signed off by the various um, representatives of all the parties. What happened, the, the, the ballots were just left at the bottom of the box and there were other envelopes that were sealed. LaRota said the presiding officer confirmed the error. After consulting with the other candidates, he said the presiding officer took the ballot boxes back inside to address the issue. When our news arrived at the site, supporters from each political party remained in the parking lot until the boxes and ballots were secured. It was very, very hot. And um, like I said, I understand the times, but things just appear to be rushed and chaotic. So you think it was basically due to the fact that there was a bit of chaos at the polls that this incident unfolded? Yes, this was just a part of the chaos. Unorganized at the poll in general have nothing to do with this. What I have to do with this is exactly as the process, we all have agents in the office that represent. The agents had concerns. Even after the envelopes were sealed, tensions ran high. I don't okay. think we should be... Uh, All right, we don't need to go to this. We agreed on the condition of the boxes being secured. But don't say that the, the boxes were sealed. Brother, okay. drop it, man. Sometimes that's where thin. We agreed, Stephen, did you not? We agreed that the, the boxes, as they came out, is satisfactorily secured. Ruben, we agreed that... We had to go look at this process. And we did. We all agreed that the process was done properly. We all agreed. We believe that the process did. was corrected. It was not corrected. Done properly. Corrected. We're talking about the end result here. Yeah. Yeah. We got the We're talking about the end result. We're talking the about the end result. result. We're talking about the headache. Now, in the end, all the candidates that represent the Pinewood constituency were satisfied with the way the ballots were packaged, except for one. That's Coalition of Independence leader Lincoln Bain. I'm still not satisfied that the ballot box isn't sealed because the other uh, constituencies' ballot boxes are sealed with wax, but these ones are not. And I think it will raise concerns to all the public. I think it will raise concern for the PLP and the FNM, uh, uh, the, sorry, the PLP and the third parties. Uh, the PLP and us stood up against this. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Amid claims of unsealed ballot boxes and confusion during the advance poll, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis says he's concerned about what could happen on Election Day. He spoke with Kyle Joaquin. The snap election having been called, that it was designed either wittingly or unwittingly to create confusion and chaos. PLP leader Philip Davis says with yesterday's advance poll only taking into account a percentage of eligible voters, he's concerned about what is to come in six days when tens of thousands of Bahamans head to the polls. Yesterday's events have been described by many as chaotic, with some irregularities concerning handling of ballot boxes and the lines to get inside the voting stations. Yesterday you had about 19,500 voters, but you only had about 10 polling stations. Clearly that is designed to create havoc and chaos. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram was one of several people caught in the confusion yesterday after he went to two polling stations to find his name was not on the advance poll register. He eventually was able to vote. What is more troubling is that we are concerned about the capacity of the election officials. Um, we have seen incidents of where they quite clearly appeared not to know what their role was and how to execute that role. However, Davis says the Parliamentary Registration Department ought to seek the assistance of some who have dealt with general elections before to avoid what he fears could be a chaotic election day. This is about the country now, and, and we don't need the inefficiencies and the ineptness that was displayed yesterday um, at the advance poll. We have made repeated attempts to reach Acting Parliamentary Commissioner Lovato Duncanson since last evening. However, they were all unsuccessful. Davis says to ensure the integrity of the process is kept, lessons must be learned and changes made to avoid a disaster on Thursday. Perhaps they need to consider having more polling stations and bring in some of the older practitioners, uh, electoral practitioners that worked elections before to help the process to avoid further confusion and further chaos on the day of election. For Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. While the results of an independent poll revealing a tight race heading into the September 16th general election. Here's a breakdown of the numbers. 
It may be a close race come election day, according to Rev Media Survey Voice of the Bahamas. The survey measured the answers of 1,176 random adults between September 6th and September 7th. When asked if the general election was held today, how would you vote? 34% of participants said they would vote for the Free National Movement, followed closely by 33% who said they would vote for the Progressive Liberal Party. However, there is a huge number of undecided voters. 19% of participants said they haven't decided yet. Support for the Democratic National Alliance, the Bahamas Constitution Party, and independent candidates makes up 13% of those polled. This as just over two-thirds of Voice of the Bahamas respondents say they do not believe the country is headed in the right direction. Just 33% said the country is heading in the right direction. The survey was conducted by independent market research firm F. and Tailmas, a research consultancy firm out of London, and used weighing factors to derive the results of the survey based on population by geography. So are potential voters happy with the direction the Bahamas as a country is going now regarding economic growth? 37% of those who participated in the survey say they are very unhappy, just 22% are somewhat happy, and 16% of respondents say they are neither happy nor unhappy. According to F. and Tailmas, the survey has a 99% confidence interval and a margin of error of plus or minus 4%. We are less than one week away from the 2021 general election. Beautiful skies over the capital today. Greg Thompson has the latest over in the Weather Center. Thanks, Christina. Welcome, everybody, for your first look at weather on this Friday evening. Of course, we have some low-level moisture out there, some showers and thunderstorms popping up earlier today. 85 degrees outside our studios with few clouds to partly cloudy skies. It's warm and humid, verbal winds at 5 knots in your field, slight temperature in the mid to upper 80s. Satellite view. Dry air mass across the area, but we do have some pop-up showers popping up across most of the major islands, some of those thunderstorms. We will continue to see one or two of those showers later on tonight. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, why some BPSU members are refusing COVID testing and later remembering former parliamentarian Peter Galanis. Stay tuned. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. The Bahamas Public Service Union is against its members at the University of the Bahamas receiving COVID testing. The university, which recently amended its policy, mandates that unvaccinated faculty and students entering the campus get tested at the university's expense. However, BPSU President Kimsley Ferguson says his members are not going to subject themselves to anything that is not in line with government mandated protocols. I want to send a message today that no such thing is going to take place. I want to encourage employees who are mandated to report to work, you subject yourself to a temperature check, you wear your mask, you sanitize your hands, you remain socially distant, and you go to work. I want to tell you that there's a mounting concern in this country among the workers, and we're going to have a national something soon, before election. Ferguson acknowledged that the country is experiencing a health crisis, but says workers must come first. He sent this strong warning in the event any of his members are denied access to the campus because they refuse COVID testing. The first complaint I get that staff are not allowed to come on this compound, I want to say to the government, it's on. Shifting gears, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis says many young Bahamians were deliberately excluded from the voting process by Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis's decision to call an early election. Giorgio Bain reports. During his party's virtual rally Thursday night, Davis told party supporters that time is winding down for the general election. But he said that he is saddened that many will not get an opportunity to vote. We all know 
Voting is essential to democracy. That's why so many Bahamians are angry about how this election has been handled. Everywhere I go, and it doesn't matter where, if I'm over the hill, or in San Salvador, or Crooked Island, or South Elutra, everywhere I go, young Bahamians are telling me, I want to vote, but I didn't have the time to register. A lot of people were caught off guard. They didn't think Minnis would call a snap election in the middle of our country's worst month during this pandemic. The Bahamas is currently experiencing the deadliest surge in COVID-19 cases. 188 COVID cases are in hospital and there are 3,205 active cases. August was a particularly rough month with more than 3,500 cases and 160 deaths recorded. In addition to poor timing, Davis says that he believes that the early election was deliberately called to exclude young voters who want change. In fact, he kept telling us that elections were not due until May 2022. The lie detectors say, that's a lie. And you know what? They think this government deliberately wanted to exclude young Bahamians. They believe the government didn't give them enough time because they know young people are hungry for change and this government can only offer them more of the same. Davis said in all his years as a politician, he has never seen this level of voter suppression. He encouraged those who can vote to do so on September 16th. Vote, because this year, a lot of Bahamians who want to vote aren't going to be able to. That's shameful, no matter the disagreements between our parties in the past. And we've had serious ones. We have never seen voter suppression tricks like this in our country before. In a democracy, voters are supposed to choose their government. But in the Bahamas today, the government wants to choose its voters. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Up next, what some candidates thought about the advanced poll process and Jonquil and the sun burning bright with 11 straight. The details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. As the Parliamentary Registration Department prepares for Election Day, some candidates are hoping that challenges experienced during the advance poll will be addressed by next week. Jillian Gray has that. There's no signs to say Carmichael go left, Golden Gates go right. There's no signs to say polling division here or polling division there. You see the sign on the door once you get to the door, but you have to know where the door is. So there's a level, a great level of disorganization here at this particular polling station. And that was just the first of many challenges, according to DNA leader Arinthia Komalafe. She says not only did officials do a poor job of organizing the voting center, political parties added to the mayhem. We've been told that tents should not be on the western side, but we come and we see that there are political parties that have tents on the western side. If they were not there, the voters would be able to organize themselves better. Both Komalafe and FNM candidate for Carmichael Desmond Bannister took issue with the PLP putting tents along the wall. The concern was that voters were bunched together at a time when physical distance is a prescribed method to help stave off the spread of COVID-19. The government has been criticized for calling an election in the middle of a pandemic, but still Bannister defended that move. The Prime Minister has managed the pandemic masterfully. He's protected Bahamian lives. But going ahead, and, and as you look and see what is happening around the rest of the world right now, in fact, Canada is in the middle of a wave and they are they're having elections four days after us. It is important for governments to say to the people, tell us if you want us to manage this pandemic. Carmichael candidate for the PLP Keith Bell, who is going toe to toe with Bannister and Komalafe, didn't agree that the election was necessary at this time. In fact, he called it reckless. And I'm satisfied that he was quite frankly reckless in calling this election at the spike of this pandemic with an engineer as head as, as head of um, as our minister of uh, health. And you would have seen at the gates, all of the old people came out, the elderly. 
those who are sick, look at them. You can look right over. There's lady in a wheelchair, all of them. And they were just piled in significant numbers. No protocols. And the thing is that the government ought to have been prepared for this. Reporting for our news, I'm Julian Gray. And Jazz Chisholm scores a big home run to spark a win. Marcellus Hall has that and more tonight in sports. All right, thanks a lot, and welcome to our sports on a Friday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall, and what better way to start off a Friday than taking a look at some of our Bahamian athletes who are doing well. It has been a while since we've been a, had a chance to talk about Jazz Chisholm and the Marlins. That's because they had a, had a bit of a rough season so far. Last night, Jazz able to turn things around, at least for the moment, as they played the New York Mets. Let's take a look. Jazz Chisholm and the Marlins haven't had much to celebrate during the course of this season. Marlins at home hosting the New York Mets yesterday evening. Great game for Jazz, both on the defensive and offensive side of the field. Jazz, first of all, on the defensive side with an incredible over-the-shoulder catch. That made its way into SportsCenter's top 10 highlights. Then in the eighth, driving a 97-mile-an-hour fastball into the upper deck in right field. That puts the Marlins up 3-2. to two. That ends up being your final score. Jazz, one for four on the night with two RBIs. Taking a look at John Quell Jones now. John Quell Jones and the Sun now winners of 11 in a row. Connecticut taking down the Sparks 75 to 57. They clinch a double bye to the WNBA semis. John Quell with 21 points, 14 rebounds in the contest. Sun have now not lost a game since the season resumed following the Olympic break. The next contest will come your way on Saturday when they take on the Phoenix Mercury. And finally to the NFL where Thursday night football kicked off the 2021 season with a battle between the Dallas Cowboys and defending champions Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This one goes right down to the wire. Tampa Bay pulling off the win 31 to 29. Tom Brady 379 yards and four touchdowns on the night for Tampa. Dak Prescott meanwhile had 403 yards and three touchdowns. That came in the loss for the Dallas Cowboys. And of course, as we wrap things up, just a quick reminder that there'll be lots of football coming your way this Sunday as the NFL season kicks off in earnest. And there it is, your check on sports. I'm Marcellus Hall. Enjoy your weekend. Back to you. Thanks, Marcellus. Still to come, parliamentarians pay tribute to Peter Galanos. The details after this. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. Some showers expected this weekend. Greg is back in the Weather Center with the details. Thanks, Christina, and welcome everybody for your second look at weather. We still have a couple of systems in the tropics that we're watching. We, of course, we have Larry that is racing off towards the north near the Nova Scotia area, expected to become extra tropical by tomorrow, merging with a very large low pressure system. And that will be the last we hear of that. Swell still affecting the Bahamas, but they will be subsiding throughout the weekend. National Hurricane Center now watching an area near the Yucatan Peninsula, expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico, likely to become a tropical depression over the next couple of days. And then, of course, we have that strong tropical wave moving off of Africa. That also has the potential to become a tropical depression over the next couple of days. Boating forecast for all areas tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, seas running two to four feet. Those swells will be subsiding. Tide will be high at 11.13 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Wednesday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe weekend, everybody. Christina. Thanks, Greg. Well, the body of former parliamentarian and insurance businessman Peter Galanos lie in state at the foyer of the House of Assembly today. Galanos served as a Free National Movement MP for the Pinedale constituency from 1992 to 1997. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis called his passing a tough loss, revealing Galanos helped shape him into the man he is today. 
I often speak about it. I mean, you hear me speak very often. I, I engaged, I recognized the influence he had had in my life. I recognized that he was part of the reason I am where I am today. And so it is a very sad day for me in particular that I would have lost such a good friend and mentor who, who but for his intervention in my life, I would not know where I'd be today. Galanos passed away on August 30th at the age of 80. He will be laid to rest following a state-recognized funeral on Sunday. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.